Yo, goons. What's good? Today, I have a fascinating video planned for everyone. And what we're going to be doing is ranking what is, in my opinion, the top 10 players currently in Guilty Gear Strive. Now, a few things to, to get out of the way. Let's just get this out of the way. It's very hard to do so. Because... Oh, for so many different reasons. It, 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 oh, God. Just to start, there are an insane number of extremely, extremely skilled players, right? Strive is actually in a pretty unique position compared to a lot of fighting games and just esports in general, in the sense that there isn't like a, cluster, a tiny cluster of players that are dominating everything. Like, there are a ton of really, really good players, and we don't know what the outcome would be if everyone were put in a bracket together. It's just, it, it, it's very, very difficult to predict. And it, it's very impressive too, at the same time. So good on Strive being a good competitive setting. Something else to get out of the way. I'm going based on what I perceive to be overall skill at the game, not necessarily how well someone would place in bracket. And there's kind of a difference between those. But to be honest, if I were to like write down exactly what I mean by overall skill at the game, it's a little bit hard to define in a precise way. So that is to say that there's probably some natural amount of bias from my perspective in this list, but I'm someone who is very solid at the game, and I also have watched a ton of the game competitively and whatnot. I have a good understanding of the meta, I have a good understanding of why someone won when they actually won, and so I think that qualifies me at least a little bit more than average to, to make this list. So that being said, let's get right into it. At number 10, I have Zondo. Zondo is, if you didn't know, the best RAM in the world, most likely at the very least, and is an extremely dominant player out of the EMEA region. In fact, probably the second most dominant player that we've seen in the EMEA region. Extremely, extremely strong RAM player. Very technically skilled and just amazing reactions on this player is one thing. Had an infamous training partner of Latif. We see Latif getting very tilted because Zondo's counterplay is just on another level when it comes to the Zotto matchup, and that kind of demonstrates Zondo's ability to learn and do extremely, extremely well just in any situation against new opponents, implement what he figured out before and whatnot. That kind of thing makes his RAM just so, so unique compared to pretty much any other RAM in the business. Now you combine that with top player neutral, top player defense, and of course RAM's offense in the hands of someone like that, and you really start to see the potential unleashed of this character. So, Zondo definitely had to make it onto this list in my own opinion. At number 9, I actually have a tie, and that's between two players out of the Japan Korea region, and that would be Jiro and Daru. So Daru is, of course, the Eno, and Jiro is the Anji. And the reason why I had these fellows make this list, not only is the fact that they've, they place very well in multiple tournaments over there, uh, over time, they're clearly very strong dominant players in their region, but also the fact that these two are really the only people on their characters that are competing at a top level. And that means that they're producing like 100% of the innovation that is on these characters. And I think that that's a really good reflection of skill at the game. Like when you're creating absolutely everything for your character, coming up with crack setups, hitting people with it and making it work at a top level, not only does that mean that you have top player, neutral de defense, etc., all that stuff we mentioned before with Sando, it also means that you have like a deep, deep 
deep understanding of how your character works. And you have a really great understanding as well of how the game works and what the opponent's going to be thinking when you're creating situations that you're going to put them in using your tech. And so I, I just think to make this these characters work, especially like last season before the balance patch, it, it just undeniably requires an absurd amount of skill at the game and level of innovation that is just just insane, impossible to put into words. And speaking of innovation, at the number 8 spot is going to be Gobo. Gobo, the dual main between Zotto and Gold Lewis now. Again, one of the most prominent players over there in Asia, one of the strongest for sure. Having won and qualified for the Arc World Tour and also gotten second recently at a major over there. Gobo is just crazy, crazy strong. And what's interesting about Gobo is a lot of the time when you watch him, especially his Gold Lewis, through my eyes, there's a lot of suboptimal quote unquote stuff going on, right? A lot of things that look questionable, but he still manages to win a lot of the time. And so that just means that Gobo's recognition of the situations he's in, and more importantly, like his reads on the opponent and whatnot, they're just crazy, crazy good. And I think that that's very, very indicative of being a top player. Now, also, of course, you factor in the results with this guy. He won Kumite early on with Old Gold Lewis, just absolutely going on a tear over there. Very, very unorthodox, and again, kind of letting that hint of innovation shine through, even though there are a lot of very strong players who innovate on Zotto, for example, and even Gold Lewis. There are also a lot of very strong, innovative Gold Lewises. Certainly, we do not get all our stuff, <laughs> if any of our stuff, honestly, from Gobo. So it's still very interesting that he manages to go so far and do so well. And just being one of the best players in Asia, I had to include Gobo on this list. But I do want to mention my boy Darkrai, I have to basically tie him um, with Gobo in this spot. I can't justify like placing Gobo and not placing Darkrai because I certainly do think that Darkrai is, you know, at that level skill wise, but also just a, a better Gold Lewis overall than Gobo. And so I think any universe, you know, where, where Gobo makes it up onto his onto a list of um, power ranked players, Darkrai has to be right there with him <coughs> at the very minimum as well. So I just wanted to give that quick little shout out, I suppose. Moving on to number seven, I have Bean. The, well, one of the chips out there in the universe. Bean kinda came out of nowhere and, and just started rocking everyone, doing super well at massive tournaments. Evo CEO Taku. This player is cracked, absolutely cracked. And what's so particularly good about Bean is that he plays neutral, like he's playing a different game, like it's not Guilty Gear Strive, because Bean will actually whiff punish like any button that any character throws out. His understanding of spacing in this game, and also just his own setups and aggression again, all of these players very innovative, but particularly with these people that are seriously carrying their characters at a competitive level, they're really on another level that way. And pretty much everyone I've mentioned so far, they're like certainly a, a considerable cut above the rest. I guess maybe with the exception of Zondo, there are a lot of good rams. But uh, these guys are, are really doing much, much better than the next bests on their character. And that's also an indication of just a very, very powerful understanding of the game. So with all of Bean's results and Bean's just beautiful, immaculate, neutral gameplay and ability to be extremely patient and composed, even on a character where a lot of people see him as like belligerent and stupid and thoughtless, he is very patient, very smart on defense, and it, it pays off. It pays off. And Bean's kind of different playstyle ability to strike the balance of being like a hyper aggressive player while also being extremely patient is what makes Bean so unique in my eyes.
At number six, I have Razo. So, Razo is a Leo player out of the United States, but actually Razo dabbles in a number of other characters. Uh, Remy Celeste actually hosted a tournament relatively recently this, uh, well, I guess at the very end of last year in December 2022. Everyone was unseated in random characters. Razo won that very convincingly. I'm just saying this person has some very, very, very strong understanding of different characters in the game. And in fact, as I'm making this video, just this week, Razo pulled out a Giovanna, what looks to be a very underdeveloped Giovanna, relatively speaking, to some of the people who've been piloting her for a long time. Almost beat Nubenheimer and did beat Umisho with that Giovanna, like clearly doing things that someone who's new to Giovanna would still be doing. And I, I just think that perfectly captures Razo as a player. The reason why Razo was able to do that is because their ability to read the opponent on offense is just insane. It's so insane the amount of things that look fake, quote unquote, that Razo gets away with. For example, I guess on Leo it would be all the, the stance cancel throws and whatnot, and you know things that look risky. They're never a risk when it comes to Razo. Not only that, but again, great neutral, great everything. It, it's going to sound a little repetitive here because some of the patterns that put these people on this list are similar across one another. So I'm going to try to differentiate each player a little bit. When it comes to Razo, I really think that Razo's ability to make offensive reads is like up there, you know, if not the best in the world. I think it, it probably is the best in the world. Overall, I think you could you could probably say that. So that's why I think Razo makes the list. You know, great versatility with characters indicates an amazing affinity with the game. Being able to play multiple characters at a top level, that 100% is an indicator of core skill at the game. It doesn't necessarily go the opposite way around, so if you can only play one character at a good level, doesn't mean that you aren't good at the game, but being able to play multiple characters at a top level is absolutely an indication that you're cracked out your mind at the game, more than being able to play one character at a top level, in my opinion. Now, speaking of the Leo fellas, at number 5, we have Tempest. Tempest NYC, previously a May, now a Leo player. And Tempest has won some offline events. Tempest has made it very far in others. Of course, Evo Top 8 and whatnot. T Tempest is, is just great. And anytime Tempest enters online, many of these other players, or even the very, very tippy top players we'll get to, Tempest can manage to beat them. You know, over a long sample size, it actually seems like Tempest, despite playing Leo, tends to stabilize. And I think, and by the way, that's also true against Bean relatively recently, Tempest double eliminating Bean at a New York Monthly. Just a very, very clean player. Uh, anyway, I think what makes Tempest so unique is that Tempest has this ability to like switch between offensive and defensive play just randomly. Or, well, no, I'm sorry, not randomly. In fact, quite the opposite of randomly and in such a structured way that it can appear random to the opponent. Like, it's very confusing how well this fella can go to being like a hyper aggressive rush down, you know, triple deep dash 2D player to someone who will play footsies and get the perfect whip punish and, and then get in there. The same kind of thing can go from being super belligerent on the DPs to never throwing out a DP. Just having really, really great awareness of what the opponent wants him to be doing. I think that's what makes Tempest really, really unique and, and what allows him to capitalize and make it so far in these events. Also, just putting in the hours and the hard work, Tempest. Shout out to you. You're a great player.
at number four, I have someone that you might not be expecting, which is Leffen. So if anything, I might think that I'm being a little bit conservative by placing Leffen at number four and not higher. So Leffen is now a Happy Chaos player and previously a Zotto player, and I think that it is undoubtable that this player is one of the best in the world. Of course, making it super far in Evo, third place, upsetting many what people, you know, thought how he was going to place and whatnot. And not only that, but picking up Happy Chaos and just a couple of weeks later, making it super far in CEO Taku too. And I think that actually just captures Leffen's entire essence as a player across multiple games has demonstrated his ability to learn quickly and adapt is, is just incredible. There are not that many players that can go and be top players between games. In fact, I really, you know, there are a couple on this list that were, were extremely good at other games outside of the Guilty Gear franchise, but no one even compares to Leffen. Like Leffen's ability to just pick up a game and instantly get amazing at it and then using that ability to learn to also go beyond that and push himself to become a top player, I think that that just inevitably means you're looking at one of the most skilled players in the world. And you know that being applied to Guilty Gear allows him to, to pick up Happy Chaos and, and almost win a couple weeks later. I'm excited to see what will happen at Frosty Faustings and you know, at Art of Japan. I don't know exactly if Leffen's going to those actually, but regardless, I'm happy to see how Leffen will compete and how we'll do in the future. Certainly a cracked player. At number three, I have TY. So TY is an extremely, another extremely dominant player out of Asia. Really all of the players I have on this list are like the cluster of super dominant players out of Asia. But what puts TY a little bit higher than the other ones I have listed, first off, like it was very hard to make this list. The distance between rankings is a little bit arbitrary and very, very little at the end of the day. But the reason why I have TY up a little bit higher is because Again, like extreme aptitude with multiple characters, the best Geo undisputed for ever pretty much, and then went over to Chip and immediately became, you know, the, the best, if not the second best Chip. And that's just, that's just wild. Like to, to have that level of, of skill so fast, again, similar to, to Leffen and like Gobo to play multiple characters at a top level and Razo. That's a hundred percent an indicator of you being an absolute God and having a fundamental understanding of the game. But what really pushes TY up higher, I think, is TY's ability to play neutral. So you might have heard this before. It's kind of a meme that TY's chip and TY's geo, they're extremely dry. Like you watch how TY plays and the way they're winning. And it's like not a lot of super advanced tech, you know, not a lot of crazy combos, not a lot of crazy choices. But somehow they're just always, always winning neutral and keeping the opponent in disadvantage and making them afraid to do anything. And... That's what really pushes Ty beyond, it, or TY, not Ty, it's not Ty, it is in fact TY, I actually used to make that mistake, referring to my old ways there, but yeah, so, so TY really kind of is the ultimate incarnation of the different fighting game cultures between uh, Strive in, in maybe the US compared to Asia, like they have a much more neutral oriented approach to the game and kind of classical fighting game style, that's why their characters that are prominent there are like Soul and, and Geo. And whatnot like strike throwers are a lot bigger there than they are here anyway ty is like the ultimate version of that so i gotta i gotta put the fella all the way up here i just gotta Getting on to the top of the list here, I have a tie at number two, not a TY, a tie between Mochi and Skill. So these are both arguably the best players in their respective regions in EMEA and in Asia, and they're both doing it on Seoul. And I would have said the same thing free patch, they're both arguably the best players in their entire regions. And again, on Seoul, in pre-patch, 
That's insane. Like, Happy Chaos, Ram, and Nago existed. Leo exists now, and also those characters still exist, and many other characters exist. To be able to do it with Soul is insane. And I, I promise I'm not using my NA bias here. I'm not using the fact that our meta is very different than, than Japan's meta. You know, I, I truly, truly think that when you watch these players, it has nothing to do with them, like, outplaying their opponent as a function of just their character being better in certain spots. It's like them majorly threading the noodle having insane, insane movement, which is kind of the one thing Soul enables you to do if you're really, really creative with him, and just using that to outplay their opponent at every possible point. Great situational awareness, finding the right 5Ks and that kind of thing, and just the fact that these players are so relevant in their in their regions is just is, is quite something. Now also, I want to say with respect to skill, we we're talking about how having different characters at a top level is an indicator of skill. Mm, skill. Yeah, uh, there's a reason he's called skill to that end. Th this fella is the absolute god and king of doing that. Because not only was he pretty much the best soul, I would say, if, if you know Mochi being the only one to dispute that for quite a while, but also picked up Biken, immediately became the best Biken. Picked up Kai, immediately became the best Kai. Like, skill is just crazy fast at learning with new characters. Just unbelievable, and many, many super strong players in EMEA. I've watched them fight skill, and I've watched them get absolutely bodied. Like, even players that are not too far behind this list, if you were to expand it, I have seen skill just dumpster them and make total clowns out of them, and, and, and that's really something. But I will say, skill a little bit inconsistent, you know, on the international stage, like an Evo had a very bad showing. There are many factors for that, low sample size and whatnot. You know, you can never really say why that is, but I just think like the evidence we have about this person just dominating their region and also being a god at multiple characters, undisputed, you know, you have to bring skill and mochi into the discussion together. If we're going to bring mochi in, you have to bring in skill. Because I think as soul players, they're like, uh, it's not clear to me who's better, who's worse by any means. And if it is to you, I, I salute, but I don't know how you're determining that. Yeah, so to talk a little bit about Mochi, also super, super dominant and also still doing it with Soul. Certainly the best Soul in Asia, and there are a ton of crack Soul players in Asia. Keep that in mind, right? That's a meta character over there even to this day. And yet Mochi manages to, to come out on top all the time, being one of those few players that just competes in the pool and always makes it to the very top. I think Mochi is actually the most consistent out of the players on this list in that region. And so that really gives him the edge and brings him to the top here. So I want to go through a few honorable mentions here before we talk about the number one spot. Starting with Peppery Splash. So Peppery Splash is a really, really strong Zotto player. And I'm also going to bring Tene into the discussion here as well. These are both NA Zottos that just have a great, great understanding of the game. Deep, deep knowledge of what every character wants to do. Of what every situation they get put in and knowing how to respond to it. And also devastating offense. Amazing setups like these fellas when they get going. It looks and feels like, because I played against them, looks and feels like you can't do anything. It's just insane. Even when their turn is over, it always feels like you're taking a risk against these fellas and having a very concentrated game plan is something. I also want to bring into the discussion Apology Man. You know, the, the Faust to do it. There are a lot of good Fausts out there. Again, there's like Nage and Leo and whatnot, and you know, lots of great players around the world on Faust, but Apology Man, I think, is a cut above the rest. Having consistent, very consistent, actually, major performance on a character that is relatively unstable. That's a good indicator that you know what you're doing, right? And Apology Man even upsetting players like Yumi Show before. That is something to be able to do that. That is absolutely something and it's worth pointing out. Slash, May player, absolute Giga Chad, god of the Middle East, doing amazing you know, on an international stage, making it all the way to second in EVO, getting second. There was a Saudi Invitational, I think, but dropping the ball a little bit in Japan, which I thought was very interesting, but I won't get into that there. I have to bring in Slash, amazing player. Speaking of other regions, I'm also going to talk about Australia here for a second. So this is maybe a little bit of my gold list bias shining through, but Australia has a gold list player called Bed the Sleeper. And if you haven't seen their Twitter, I would highly recommend you check it out. 
But Bed the Sleeper is another one of those players that just innovates to an insane extent on his character and also has an extremely unique playstyle while playing at a top level. Bed the Sleeper is going to Evo Japan and I 100% expect this fella to make it very, very far. People will know the name Bed the Sleeper. Mark my words, come back to the video when the damage is done. I am certain he's going to do well over there because the level of optimization that he has and just knowledge of what to do with his character because he came up with all of it and put in the time optimizing it is better than mine, is better than Dark Rise, is better than Gobo's, any other gold list by a huge extent, a massive margin, is he better at everything when it comes to knowing what to do with his character in particular in many situations. Another honorable mention I wanted to point out is best in the world by far, Latif. So, might be a surprise to many that I didn't end up putting Latif on this list, and I want to say two things to that. Number one, bear in mind it's like I said, it's really hard to make this list. I am struggling to come up with a consistent ranking here. Like, I, I redid the ranking here several, several times. Every time I did Zonda went down, I'm sorry about that. But in any case... Latif has to be mentioned at the very least. Latif, so, so strong. So, so interesting the way he plays neutral, making great use of his movement and the P buttons. But I think what holds Latif back a little bit is actually almost entirely mental fortitude. I think if Latif didn't get tilted ever, you know, if we had like prime emotionless robot god Latif, you could be looking at potentially, you know, the best player in the world by far. I, I mean it. I mean it when I say that. Unbelievably skilled player and actually... In a setting where it's not as stressful, Salty Sweets definitely showcased it. You know, de definitely, definitely put in the work. Speaking of which, I also want to mention Hotashi. Hotashi, a, a great Nago player, great defense, but again, some some consistency issues. Very consistent offline, and I think maybe doesn't take online as seriously, which is why we don't see Hotashi when he enters online, you know, winning all the time. But in, in any case, when you watch Hotashi and Latif set, the level of gameplay is like the absolute maximum on display in that set. And I just think that that captivates both players' skill levels, and I, I want to mention them in the running for this list. And for the final two honorable mentions, first off, I have Kid Viper. So, I don't think Kid Viper could compete with any of the players I've mentioned here. Like, I think Kid Viper would probably get washed by all of them in tournament. But... What Kid Viper is so amazing at is despite not like grinding the game that much, still being unbelievably good at it and not far beyond these players, you know, or rather not far behind these players. And what I love about Kid Viper is that when a new character comes out, picks them up instantly and immediately becomes number one with that character, finding all the tech at once. KV is like the fella to watch if you want to figure out what to do on a new character and how to do cool combos and whatnot. And when Kid Viper actually does commit to a character, becomes number one you know, very quickly. Testament and Bridget in those cases. You know, being able to do that on multiple characters, again, an indicator of god level skill. For the final honorable mention, and this is gonna come as a surprise to many, Umi Show. So I actually don't have Umi Show making this here. Evo Champion, how could I not justify having Evo Champion on the list? Well. Let me give my thoughts a little bit. So first off, Umisho, unbelievably skilled player. Like everyone I've mentioned so far, they all have god level skill, and in another timeline, they could all be reasonably ranked on this list with the rankings swapped quite around, except for number one. And I, I, I personally, you know, I, I truly hate to say this, and Umisho is definitely better than I am. I, I don't want to go out insinuating anything, but I have to say, I'm sorry if Happy Chaos didn't exist. I do not think Umi Show would have had a chance at winning EVO. I, I really don't, just because when I watch everything about their gameplay compared to many of these other players, I, I think that Umi Show is fantastic and does many things amazingly well, but I just think that Umi Show is a little more susceptible to being conditioned than a lot of these players on defense. It shows when some of the players on the list have fought against Umi Show and you know managed to get over her game plan. But she is extremely innovative with Happy Chaos, coming up with pretty much everything. But I, I just, you know, I'm not comfortable in saying that you're just on the same level when your win condition has, like, quite literally zero counterplay. 
compared to, to pretty much anyone else on this list. Like Slump Loops, really, there's no discernible counterplay to me. Now, I'd love to have my mind changed. I'd love to live in a timeline where Umisho never swapped off Soul and took the spot of Skill and Mochi. And I'm not saying that that would have been impossible here. I'm just saying the way I see it, I, I can't justify, you know, seeing the Happy Chaos gameplay and especially when they lose and and putting them super high on this list. They could have made this list for sure. Could have made it even quite high on the list, but I, I don't, you know, voila, voila. And without further ado, the number one player in the world, in my opinion, but I will say this much, this player I think is indisputably number one. I think that any other player on this list could have their, their position swapped around, but you could never justify putting them above this one player just because the results speak for themselves past a certain point. And also just use your eyeballs, watch the gameplay. And of course, I'm talking about Ankle Gator, the best pot to ever do it in the history of the world. Now I'm just kidding, I'm talking about Nubenheimer. Nubenheimer, of course, the best doggo at the moment, in my humble opinion and had their first offline showing by having an amazing run and winning actually at CEO Taku. And I happen to be quite an expert on Nubenheimer gameplay because I've been watching him stream since day one. He does stream, check it out on Twitch. And this fella has by far the most tournament wins of anyone in, in any, in, you know, in all of Strive, by far. It's not even close. Not only that, but also probably has the highest win percentage of any, you know, tournaments with significant players out of anyone in Strive also by far, you know. In terms of number of tournament wins, I'm not even kidding when I say Nubenheimer might have more tournament wins than any player combined in the last six months. So in other words, like, of all the tournaments that happened in the last six months, you know, I'm ignoring like small weeklies and whatnot, I think Nubenheimer has won the majority of them, in other words, like alone. And that's just ridiculous. Nubenheimer, everyone that he's played on this list, he has beaten, actually has a winning record, except maybe against Tempest, on everyone that he's fought against on this list. And just, you watch this player and it's like incomprehensible how he's doing some of the things he's doing, especially when it comes to blocking, when it comes to Happy Chaos Mix, and in particular situational awareness is like what really pushes Nubenheimer above everyone else, ability to recognize what's happening to him and what his options are in a given situation and quite often chooses options that are correct and that everyone watching including the opponent didn't even know existed or was possible in that in in, in that position i mean it's insane i cannot overstate enough that i really believe this player is by a good margin the best in the world and i'm very excited to see how nubenheimer performs at frosty faustings and internationally when he goes over to evo japan the expectations are high and I don't think that there's anyone in the world, if I were saying they had a set against Nubenheimer, that I would bet money on beating Nubenheimer, regardless of the matchup, regardless of the player. There's not one. And I, I think that that really says something. All I need to say is if you're a Nubenheimer doubter, first off, look at the results. Second off, wake up, you're delusional. Third off, just watch him. Just use your eyeballs, okay? So that's going to do it for me, goons. That's everything I had planned for this one. This was a fun video to make, but I... I think this is probably going to be pretty controversial, so take it with a grain of salt. I, I just want to say this again, I'm not a rando, I do kind of know what I'm talking about when it comes to the game. You know, I can certainly analyze it at a top level and play it at a level that is not too far below that. So, you know, keep that all in mind. Keep that all in mind, okay? Okay, goons. If you enjoyed this, check out my Twitch. I'll link it in the description. And yeah, see you later, goons.